how whenever we read a problem, marginal basically tell us find a relative for me. Okay. So at this point, at this point, I hope you will have the skill that every time you read a word problem, there are two red flags that you have to keep note for yourself whenever you see those words, that means you need to find the relative. The first term is rate of change. Okay, and the second is, um, again, marginal something. So today we will learn about marginal revenue, marginal cost, marginal profit function, those kind of terms that mean you need to take the relative of those functions and plug numbers in. So anytime you see this kind of term, that means the question asks you to find the relative. Okay. As a quick review, if the question asks you find the average rate of change, then go back to the, the old material, and this material also covered in your exam, which is the slope of a secant line. Okay, so again, I write down, so yp minus yq divided by xp minus xq. Specifically, what is this? Please refer to your quiz too. Okay, that is average rate of change. So here's all the key words that you, you want to be aware of whenever you read a word problem. Okay. So let's go into, uh, I will have to be reminded that I need to go through with you one problem in your homework five. I find this problem a little bit tricky with the way they ask you to do. So I have to find time to go through one homework problem with you. So first definition, marginal cost. Why, why is it, well, according to how I understand when I read the passage, why uh, businesses are concerned about marginal cost, marginal revenue, or marginal profit, is because when it comes with business, it's not deterministic. In fact, anything out there is not deterministic. You do not expecting that this month I'm gonna sell 100 iPhones and next month I'm gonna sell exactly 150 iPhone and so on and so forth. You predicting it, but at the same time, it's gonna have to have some varies to your quantity. So the next question is, well, as a, a person who doing business, when you, when you have to, it's not about iPhone, but even with, uh, when you need to produce certain kind of products, you have a cost that you need to produce that kind of product to meet the demand of your customers. And on the other hand, with more customers, of course, you have more money coming in because uh, because revenue. So with a little bit changing, right, with some tolerance of the demand quantity, how is it will make your profit change just by a little bit, right? So I am expecting maybe a, a hundred quantity that I'm going to produce for this month. What if for some reason I'm producing a tiny bit more, 101, 102, will it affect a lot in my, in my profit, right? So, so that is why marginal function kind of telling you if you just have a little bit tolerance in your demand, I will tell you how much in change, right? Again, the word change in there. What is the rate of change in your profit as a, a business that you will concerned about. So the first function that we worry about as a business is business person is the cost right, to produce a certain kind of product. So this is the cost. Recording.
rate of change. The idea of marginal cost is telling you how much your cost will change if you just produce an additional unit of commodity. The second phrase tells you how to find it. The key word again is rate of change. And as I mentioned over here, every time we see rate of change, that's equivalent to derivative. Okay. So, for example, the total cost. The total cost in dollars, so this is the dollar sign right here, um, in pressing X compacted is given as below. Uh, C of X, C stands for cost, so C of X equal to 2,000 plus 2X. Two Minus 0 0.1231 One x squared, with x between 0 to 6,000. So this is a cost that you will have to, to pay every time you want to press and compact it. If you don't, well, if you notice this, when x equal to 0, is the cost equal to 0? Now, when x equals zero, how much is the cost? Two thousand. So that is a fixed cost. Basically, you have to pay for. I mean, you have a contract with a ma with a manufacturer. So even though you don't press any compact this, you still have to pay them a monthly fee. Yeah. So would the x be like the variable cost that we're looking for? Um, to be precise, x is not a cost. X is the number of discs that you make, okay. and c is the cost. So when units. you put x into your function, you get the <coughs> out of it. And that is the cost that you're looking for. To break okay. even, to, to make our money back marginal. Okay. So I actually, I think this side kind of problem is the same set up as your homework. So part A, the problem asks you, what is the actual cost? The actual cost in producing find out how much the average disk would cost by itself. Hmm? I would take the, the amount it costs to, to produce it and then divide it by how many I have. Mm. Well, that, that answer, actually you, the, you, in a sense, you kind of imply that the relationship is linear. Okay. Right? But actually it's not. This is not it, a linear relationship. It varies. It's quadratic. Okay. Okay. So I cannot just take the cost and then divide it by 961 and I said this is the one. No. Fixed cost, too. Okay, so let me repeat my explanation again. I original plan to produce 960 discs. But now the plan has changed and I have to produce 961 discs. And I want to know what is that extra cost that I will have to pay. 
Yes. How would you do 961 subtracted by 960 and divided by 5? Okay. So almost right. The fact that you use a 960 and 961, I, I like that idea. Yes. So we just plug in 960 into the equation and then 961 then just subtract into the difference? That's it, right? That way I will not make any assumption that this is a linear relationship. Okay? The relationship didn't say that you caught exactly the same amount for every disk. Right? The relationship is kind of strange. So what did uh, Veronica said? Well, can you find the cost to make 960 disks? Okay? So cost to make 960 disks. Okay? How can I find the cost? It's by plugging 960 into the function C, right? 